Alright, no rest for the weary, I always say. And uh, we are preparing for our next Tosscast Podcast All-Star Show, which we'll be doing tomorrow. And to prepare for that, I figured I would take the time to do a quick review on the latest Precise Pangolin 1204. Beta 1 just released today, and we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. We are looking at Precise Penguin, the first beta. And let me tell you folks, this actually looks really good. The first thing that really surprised the heck out of me was how responsive this is, even in my virtual machine. Now, I actually installed this and I have guest editions working so that we can get the full experience of this operating system. Okay, first, let's go ahead and have a look at the title bar. You have, a, you have your power settings here, and then you also have your session settings. You have a really nice looking uh, calendar here, a volume control, network, battery power, and then you also have an email link right here. Now, one thing I've noticed is that Unity is actually a lot more responsive in this release, more so than any other... Uh, any other um, Ubuntu releases that I have uh, seen. Now, interestingly enough, there are people that are working on porting Unity over to Arch. And uh, if they can get it this good, running in Arch, I may actually consider using this on my operating system to replace Avant Window Navigator. Now, I'm not going to be able to devote too much time into uh, going over this uh, operating environment perspicuously because I am preparing for uh, tomorrow's episode with the Linux 8 team where we're actually going to be having discussions on Ubuntu and operating systems for uh, this year. Okay, so let's just go ahead and have a quick look at some of the things that you get with this and you'll actually get an opportunity to see just how responsive uh, this new Unity is. Okay, first, um, let's have a look at some of the things I have minimized. Uh, let's look at our home folder here. I really like the transition effect. I thought that was very nice. And I also like how they also polished up the navigation bar up here, uh, which, is, which I think is pretty neat as well. A very quick navigation to all of your uh, files and everything on your system. And, of course, you can easily navigate your file system as well. I thought that was very nice. You also get uh, Firefox version 11 with this, which is uh, really good as well. This also comes with LibreOffice. And I really like what they did with the Ubuntu Software Center. Now, I have covered this in previous episodes, but it's really neat how they organized everything. It looks a lot nicer and a lot neater and easier to find the applications that you are looking for. Let's do a quick search and just see if there's something we can get. Let's see if Kazam is available. And there it is. So now you can easily just click on that and install it. Very nice indeed. Okay, well, let's have a look at the pre-installed applications. We're going to go ahead and click on Dash Home here. All right, now, your home doesn't really have anything in it just yet. But the thing is, you can go into Applications, and then you can filter your results by hitting these tabs here. In Accessibility, you get uh, Onboard and the Orca Screen Reader. Plus, it also lists some suggestions that you can have for uh, additional accessibility options. In Accessories, you get the File Roller Archive Manager, Backup, Rosero, Disk Burner, Calculator, Character Map, Disk Usage Analyzer, Disk Utility, Files, Help, iBus. Onboard and Orca Screen Reader are listed again. Privacy, Screenshot, Terminal, Text Editor, Time and Date, and X Diagnose. 
Okay, and ah, I see what happened. When I unticked accessibility, it only shows the accessories. Okay, very nice. We can click on customization and untick accessories. And then you will see here it gives us a list of all the different things we can do in terms of customizing the system. And there are a number of applications and that sort of thing. But we'll have a look at that in just a moment. All right, then in developer tools you get Bliss Hack, Bless Hex Editor, Idle 3, GPHP Edit, Spider, and Composer for those of you who want to build your own websites. In education you get... TK Gate Circuit Simulator, Little Wizard, Auto Multiple Choice, Marble, and uh, Python SciCache. In fonts, nothing listed just yet. In games, you get the Isle Riot Solitaire, Free Cell Solitaire Mahjong, my favorite game, Mines, and Sudoku. In graphics, you get Events, Document Viewer, Image Viewer, LibreOffice, Draw, Shotwell, Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. I'm surprised they did not include the GIMP in this, but you can easily get it through the Software Center. In Internet, you get Desktop Sharing, Empathy Internet Messaging, Firefox Web Browser, Glibber Social Client, Ramina Remote Desktop Client, Thundermerd... Thunderbird Mail and Transmission for all of you SOPA lovers that are downloading Legal Torrents. You are downloading Legal Torrents, right? Very good. Okay. All right. And then in media, you get Brazero Movie Player, Rhythm Box Music Player, and Sound Recorder. In Office, you get the Events Document Viewer that I covered earlier the LibreOffice suite, and that's it. But you can get more stuff if you need it. Okay, let's see what we got in science and engineering here. Uh, I am View Image Viewer, AltoS UI, E Extrema, GERBV Gerber File Viewer. Uh, I guess let's look at the ingredients for the baby food recipes, I think, I think. And then, uh, Visolate. What is that? I have no clue. All right, and then in System, you get Backup, iBus, Lock Screen, Log File Viewer, Log Out, Network Tools, Passwords and Keys, Power Statistics, Printing, Privacy, Restart, Shutdown, Startup Disk Correct, Startup Disk Creator, System Monitor, System Settings, System Testing, the Ubuntu Software Center, Update Manager, User Accounts, and UX Term. All right, so all in all, this looks pretty complete for what you're getting for the download size. Okay, now, something else. To access the HUD, you press the Alt key on your keyboard. Hmm, it's not working for me this time, but it did earlier. But then again, this is a beta, so... You know, um, that is to be expected, and the thing is, I haven't quite figured out all the things uh, that uh, that you can do with the HUD just yet. I saw a few little videos on it and that sort of thing, and, well, there's a mishmash of stuff going on in my head because, I mean, I'm reading news on just about every Linux distribution out there, so I tend to get a little confusing after a while. I did promise to show you the settings, so let's have a quick look at system settings here. Okay, now, in the settings, you get appearance, brightness and lock, keyboard layout, language support, Ubuntu 1. And then in hardware, there are additional drivers. Notably, it's going to try and install a, uh, a proprietary graphics driver. I recommend staying away from them, but some, some of you just can't live without them. I understand completely. Bluetooth, color, you can manage your displays, keyboard, mouse and touchpad, network, power, Printing, sound, a Wacom graphics tablet for all of you artists out there, uh, backup, details, privacy, time and date, universal access, and user accounts. Uh, we'll have a quick look at appearance here. You will see there isn't a whole lot that you can do in terms of appearance at this time, but the thing is, if you go on, oh my god, Ubuntu, or you go on the web update site, there are tons and tons and tons of customizations that you can get for this. So, you know, 
that page is definitely worth having a look at. All right, and my final thought on this. Is this a good replacement for Windows? You bet it is. It is absolutely magnificent. Is this going to be better than Windows 8? You bet it is. People will adopt this a lot better. This is a, you know, this is a lot more intuitive for people to use. Uh, the uh, Unity interface has actually improved quite a bit. It's a lot more usable. Um, and this is actually something I would like to use in Arch once the developers uh, for Arch are able to get this ported over. I would actually try this, especially if I can get it to work vertically rather than horizontally. It's looking really good. Way to go, way to go Ubuntu. You're doing a nice job. I can't wait to see what the final product on this is going to look like. Uh, I'd like to know your impressions, so put them in the space below. If you thought this was useful, definitely comment and subscribe. Google+, Plus, Facebook, and Twitter will keep you up to date every time I send a new video to my channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. We'll see you next time.